Welcome, friends of the show. We are back with another episode of the Ferris Wheel Serious Rock Talk Podcast. Oh, all right. A big thanks for your emails, suggestions, and your support on our social media platforms. Continue to email us at SeriousRockTalk at gmail.com. Find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Listen to a new show every week. Just tune in each Wednesday evening, 7 p.m. New York City time on Cap City Beats, located at www.capcitybeats.ca. Okay, buckle up for some serious rock talk. <laughs> and we're back. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, we are back. It's wonderful to be back. One of us will be back. So uh, I'm, I'm back. Ferris Kennedy here, uh, a.k.a. Kennedy. I kind of go like Madonna with one name. Yeah, you're that famous. That's that. it. I'm that yeah. famous. And uh, to the right of me, a man who is uh, no stranger to uh, hanging out with Morton Downey Jr. back in the day. I don't know how you know him, but that's true. He's <laughs> long, forgotten, but great. He Did talked he, and Clark. He was a heavy smoker, was he not? Oh, <laughs> he spit up camels during his meal. I mean, just... <laughs> And a man who actually was intrigued and inspired by Phil Donahue. <laughs> For the look. <laughs> and the- Stephen Wheeler. That's another one you're surprised yeah, that I know. It, yeah, and I know by Wheeler because I can't remember my first name. The first, the great Donahue quote is, this is Phil Donahue in our next program, Men Who Live With Women. We'll be right back. <laughs> so what, what do we got today, uh, Wheels? The most bizarre of all subject. Yes. New wave music. Oh, so that in Quebec, they call it as Nouvelle Vague. Exactly. And they call it in France too, but it has to do with a, a film <laughs> movement. <laughs> Jean-Luc Godard. And other happy people. Which actually is the reason why it's called New Wave. Uh, uh, it's inspired by La Nouvelle Vague in France. That's what uh, John Delancey would say. Oh, mon capitaine, mon capitaine. <laughs> you know John Delancey? Oh, yeah, cute. Uh, yeah, you know John Delancey? Too, no, but I know did. Walt Whitman. From Is he what actually French, about. by the way? I don't think so. Okay. Well, no. Delancey's a huge French, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and would, would it be Irish too? <laughs> Sean Delancey. John. John. No, I, I know that. <laughs> 99. Yeah, but listen, 86. <laughs> Hello, yes, Chief. Chief. Max, here you are, my wayward so, son. New Wave is a pop oriented style that emerged in the late 70s, early 80s. And it's basically a catch all term for the music that came after punk rock. It was kind of punk itself. But if you look at it now with our rear view approach, uh, frankly, you have to consider it post punk more well, than anything. Punks else. never dressed that well. No, exactly. <laughs> they didn't. Uh, what they do have in common with those guys is that they have a do-it-yourself philosophy. Uh, they were mostly influenced by the lighter strains of the 60s pop. Uh, they didn't really have the ger- general abrasive political bends of pro- punk rock. And they weren't considered as serious, let's put it that way, as what, what came to be known as corporate rock. Uh so, so basically, it's the alternative of the 70s and 80s. That's true. Uh, the other thing they're really known for is the electronic sound that they really pushed forward. And they also have a very distinctive visual style because these guys came along when music videos. Yeah, MTV guys. Exactly. Yeah, sure. And so basically, if we look at them in a modern way they're really pop rock but uh they are also the granddaddy of power pop synth pop ska revival soft strains of punk rock there's so many ways of looking at it yeah which makes this uh this show basically we're going to be all over the map uh the one thing we can say about new most new wave artists though is that they're mostly one hit wonders (laughs) Well, uh, you know, that, that's, uh, well, that's, that's for a few. That, but that's really interesting. Maybe, yeah. That's a good idea, though. That's a good yeah. point. Excuse me. Yeah. It's interesting. I think this is sadly true. Well, no. Men a without lot hats, them, a lot B-52s. Men without what? Scrotums. Okay. Yeah, that's what you call them. <laughs> okay. Men without hats, B-52s, and Depeche Mode are the top three that come to well, mind. Well, uh-huh. Elvis oh, Costello, uh-huh. I guess. Yeah, well, but, but the thing is, they, they had a few... Albums where they were uh, new wave, but and then the I know then they, they basically they, they, they escaped. the buggles <laughs> exactly. So uh, the term itself is, according to the new Rolling Stone Encyclopedia of Rock, virtually meaningless. It was originally used as a catch-all, and uh, in the 1995, 
1985 discography Who's New Wave in Music listed artists basically in 130 categories. Uh, And it's also very hard to pinpoint in terms of origins. Uh, But most people will say it's British. So another British invasion. That's interesting. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. But, I mean, we know it mostly due to New York uh, artists. That's true. So we have... uh, the Velvet Underground and New York Dolls in the late seventies that are completely the, basically making rock the most bizarre thing because at that point rock is uh, really spreading in every possible direction. Well, maybe not the Velvets then, but they inspired, I think, the Dolls. Dolls, yeah. But the well, because so, the basically the Velvet Underground showed everybody that rock could be at a time serious and completely ridiculous, and that you didn't need a great voice, and like you, you didn't need just, these, you know, yeah, yeah. But rock was cool, and no, exactly. It still is. And yeah. well, yeah, and, <laughs> and so basically, New Wave is also another name that we associate with New York. It's CBGBs, yeah. sure, uh, because no CBGBs. No new wave in the states, and basically no new wave in rock history, uh, because the states dominated rock in the seventies and eighties. So CBGBs is basically responsible for gr- groups like Talking Heads, Mink Deville, Blondie, uh, proto punk stuff that came out of Ohio, like Devo. Basically, had to go through CBGBs to be recognized. Uh, yeah, more obscure stuff: The Electric Eels, uh, Rocket from the Tombs. Perubu, which is... Uh, <laughs> very, frankly, they're French. They're French. Well, they're inspired by a French play, at the very least. Uh, they had other important bands, such as Suicide, Modern Lovers. Oh, these are great bands, actually. Suicide and Modern. Jonathan uh, Richmond. Yeah. yeah. Um, you have also... Uh, uh, the Ramones are kind of... Uh, I know they're, a, they're kind of an interesting crossover band. Uh, they do CBGBs, but they're mostly punk. Yeah, but yeah. I always thought they're kind of punky. But yeah. then they, Phil Spector produced them. Go figure. We're, no, exactly. So it, it, it's a weird time. It's a uh, weird time. Yeah. Some people even consider Runaways to be a new wave band. So you know, Ford and Cherry, 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 Cherry yeah. Uh, uh, Joan Jett. Joan Jett. Yeah, I don't consider that new wave. It's Italian girl. Joan yeah, Jett. Joan Jett. She's Italian. Yeah, she's still around. I'll talk about her actually. During this podcast. So this is like the late, late, uh, mid to late 70s. So at that point, we're mostly in proto, like post-punk. Yeah. Uh, we're oh, we're yeah. still very rocky at that point. Uh, come the 80s, uh, now it gets to be really electronic. Uh, and we get, get out of the underground music sound. And everybody looked like a vampire. And that's true, yeah. Check out the videos. Everyone is pale, and they're not happy. The golf <laughs> look is in. Yeah, they're really, really skinny, and they're unhappy because they're awake and haven't had blood. I went to school in college. Was the, the goth was huge on oh, a lot of the girls. Terrifying. God bless them. They look fantastic. Oh, <laughs> good for you. No, they were great. They, they, oh, usually. They were like, super pretty. Well, but th- those are uh, new millennium punks. They're not the '70s punk. I was there for the yeah. Anyway, oh not, well, I, maybe okay. Sorry, I better not, com- <laughs> I better not comment D- on that. Different era. Eh? <laughs> Often it wasn't flattering. <laughs> That's just me. So uh, we, when we get to the late '70s, uh, we're not exactly new wave is still slightly underground. The sales are starting to pick up, not that much yet. When we get to late '78, early '79. That's when it gets to be really big, and that's when the sound starts to change, and it gets really electronic. That's when we get Blondie, Talking Heads, The Police, The Cars. Uh, there's uh, like the most new wave sound at that point is My Sharona, uh, yeah. which was everywhere. The by the Knacks. By the Knacks. Uh, I wasn't it the only hit by the Knacks. Mm, they had one other minor one, yeah. No one knows about it except yeah. for Ian. Yeah. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Oh, there, my Sharona. Uh, nah, nah, nah. I mean, good beat though. And it, it gets out of New York because at that yeah. point, a lot of the bands it, from Middle America, uh, actually anywhere in America, uh, you've had you have the B fifty twos that come out. You got REM, which in the early days we were new wave. True. Uh, some people. Even see some influence of new wave in the music of Billy Joel and Linda Ronstadt at that point. 
Uh, mm, that's kind of a stretch, but okay. it's a stretch. But Wham uh, does not belong on that list, by the way. They have Wham listed as New Wave. I don't consider Wham New Wave. They, they might have in the first album when it was really not popular. <laughs> they had a rap song, Wham. Go figure. It's called Wham Rap. It's actually pretty good. Uh, some people even say that uh, the New Wave sound of the late 70s, early 80s is actually the result of. Uh, African American pioneers such as um, Stevie Wonder and Parliament Funkadelic, because they they introduced a lot of electronic sounds in the early seventies. That's true, a lot of synth sounds. You're right. And so, uh, one of the things you'll notice as new wave evolves is all these sounds coming from other genres, which rock at that point didn't do. Uh, well, prog rock kind of did, but prog rock was never mainstream as never much. not really so one of the things you'll notice if you listen to new wave from the late 70s early 80s is you'll hear jamaican music electronic art music jazz music rhythm and blues uh you'll hear uh music of alternative dance uh clubs from new york and chicago it's just a really insane melting pot and you even have artists like africa bambada yeah that's right who actually embrace new wave which is the most bizarre statement you've ever heard if you ever heard listen to his later stuff it's hard to believe i know that new wave was ever that big it's true and then 81 arrives and that is the start of mtv and that's when it gets everywhere in the culture well yeah big time the videos the video killed the radio star which was the first thing played in mtv by the way yeah. exactly yeah yeah, how's that for foresight? New wave. So new wave is what made MTV. Basically, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They and had great videos. Yeah, well, and they put, did. It was and cool. they put brought a lot of money what, into it. And they brought what the journalists labeled a second British invasion, which was like all these bands from England basically <laughs> selling out thanks to videos on MTV. True. You know why they did that, right? Because it was already the, the, the template was already broken. You know, Pink Floyd already came out. Uh, the Who. Zeppelin, the Stones, the Beatles, they already that's already the first British invasion, man. They already came in and set their mark, so they had to try something different. Exactly. <laughs> so they did it on visuals. Yeah. I mean the Beatles didn't have a lot of great videos. They did or did not? Not. No, they had something called great songs, which is why they're still around. And you we mentioned earlier why you've never heard of most of these people. Uh, because they're one hit wonders. Sorry. Yeah. They just are but they look great. You know, mm -hmm. so they did one song and they're pretty well. I mean, I would most people in the street can't name you. I don't know a, Su a Susie and the Banshee album. They can't name you. Um, I don't know three Talking Head albums. I mean, it, sorry, that's just the way it went. You know, or give me five Elvis Costello albums. I don't know. So they, they were, and I should, probably shouldn't abuse him because I know he's turned into this cultural figure and all that. But most of them you can't name. He's called the show numerous times. I don't know if he got my number. He gets, yeah. he gets upset. Everything is like, you tell Dr. Clark I, I belong in Classic Rock. Well, you shall pass the message mm -hmm. on, but now we're talking to you about a new wave, so I'm hoping you're going to comment too. Oh, thanks for mentioning me. You know? <laughs> well, next time, tell him what to call you. 2 a.m. drunk. Okay? He, on yeah, the he, toilet. Yeah. <laughs> he gets mad. And yeah. I, think, I think it's because, you know, down a crawl... Canada Connection. Uh, Maybe that's yeah. if he thought we were nice guys nice. because we're Canadian. He, he calls. He called me two, three times. He was upset. And he's like, yeah, yeah. I'm classic rock. I'm like, yeah. you're not. No. <laughs> Sorry. You're not Zep. Zep is classic. No. <laughs> you're New Wave. You're Allison. You oh, belong with on. Rick Ocasek and Ben. <laughs> ben <laughs> yeah. What's his name? Uh, uh, no, man. Benjamin Orr in right, the, yeah. the, the, the cars. cars. That's your, your New Wave. My best friend's girlfriend. That's yeah. it. My best <laughs> So we get to the mid '80s at this point, and Years. and there are every like, artists of that genre are everywhere, and it gets to the point where it's oversaturated, and you'll see this in the fact that soundtracks actually become really big in the '80s. Huge. Uh, it started somewhat in the '70s. You have American Graffiti, whose soundtrack was really popular. Was a, but that was a compilation. Yeah, Those were right. compilation, and they, they were an afterthought. Uh, in the 80s, it becomes a marketing Yeah, look strategy. at Blondie and... What was the American Jiggle one? Try me! Yeah. Call me! Call me! It was huge. huge. That, the movie made the single. 
But exactly. you gotta watch the movie Two Hundred Cigarettes. It was a movie yeah. done in the what early zeros, I'm yeah. gonna say, and it was based out of the '80s. And apparently, like Elvis Costello comes to this party. He's in this. He's in the movie. Yeah. But you gotta watch it. it it's, it's probably on Netflix. It, it is actually a really good movie. It's called Two Hundred Cigarettes. It's based on a New Year's Eve in uh, New York in the '80s. All right. Christina Ricci's in it too. And uh, the movies I recommend if you are interested in uh, finding out about New Wave are 16 Candles, Pretty in Pink, and The Breakfast Club, which are yeah. basically the yeah, Brad yeah. Pack trifecta. Won't you uh, forget about me? You also have the low-budget hit Valley Girl, but that's more associated yeah, that with Zappa. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> sounds a little dirty, if you ask me. Yeah, well, everything sounds dirty to you. With Zappa, yeah. it's always dirty. Probably. <laughs> Mother's uh, intervention. So basically, <laughs> uh, on these uh, these soundtracks, you hear a lot of psychedelic, psychedelic furs, simple mind, orchestral maneuvers in the dark, which is extraordinarily obscure now, and Echo and the Buddy Man. Oh yeah, good band, actually. You just mentioned a lot of great bands. OMD, orchestral maneuvers, and a great band. How about the Fix? No one mentioned the Fix. Oh, yeah, the Fix. So, uh, but... It, of course, with everything that becomes overly saturated, it starts blowing up. And by 1988, 89, modern rock starts uh, dominating yeah, the charters again. Yeah. Not for long, because grunge is just around the corner. That's right. Uh, but there's also the fact that New Wave had the same problem as disco, which is it got into a lot of dancing club yeah uh, it's dance music a lot it, of it was dance music and it was uh, it became unfortunately the uh, the victim of a lot of homophobic true backlash yeah it did uh, and so it disappeared kind of in the same way disco did uh, in some ways I know disco uh, that was mean I always thought remember they burning albums I hate even if I don't like the music, you don't break and burn albums. No, exactly. I thought that was a horrible thing at that um, at that the, the baseball sucks, stadium. Yeah. What a horrible thing to in do in Chicago, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure. It was a, I remember it was a halftime thing. I don't, what a dumb thing to do. I would have taken those vinyls. I didn't, you know what they're worth now? Yeah. So, <laughs> have you heard any? I yeah, do. I do. <laughs> Welcome to Clark Comments. Shut up and buckle up as the good doctor kicks out the jams and offers a selection of questionable, disturbed opinions that are somehow related to popular music. You know, a lot of rockers try to appear weird. Tough guys in leather. We mentioned Joan Jett earlier. Like, pounds of makeup were elegantly wasted like, a, I don't know, Keith Richards or something. They're such posiers, you know, whatever. So when you encounter the true weirdness in rock, especially from a place that seems so wholesome, it really puts every, the fake guys into perspective. Now, here's a here's the story that illustrates that. In the summer of 1968, a year before Charles Manson orchestrated Seven Murders in Los Angeles, he insinuated himself into a strange relationship with an unlikely source. The Beach Boys, right? These West Coast sunny guys surfing the usa guys manson met the band's drummer dennis wilson after wilson picked up and drove home two female hitchhikers who happened to be living in manson's cult known as the family not long afterward wilson returned home at night to find the lights on and a school bus parked outside he watched a small man walk toward him wilson asked if the intruder intended to hurt him do i look like i'm going to responded charles manson dropping to his knees to kiss Wilson's feet. Like, you know what gets... If they, even that would set you off. However, this is the late 60s. Diane Lake, rather a member of the family who wasn't involved in the murders, described in her memoir um, Manson's ability to captivate Wilson. She wrote, Dennis and Charlie hit it off right away, which is not surprising given Charlie's skills at ingratiating himself with strangers. Dennis, in no rush to leave, Hung out for a while, smoked some pot with Charlie, and listened a bit to Charlie's songs, unquote. According to Diane Lake, Wilson provided for the group and even drove them all to see a doctor after a round of gonorrhea hit. This is a charming, charming place and people, right? <laughs> Jesus. Boy, at the time, Manson was angling for a record contract, and Wilson too, took to calling him the wizard introduce him to friends and industry executives with varying results. Neil Young seemed to think Manson was an improvisational genius and talent scout 
Craig Jacobson wanted to feature Manson and his family in a documentary. Boy, talk about having to backpedal on that stuff. Manson particularly tried to impress Wilson's close friend, Terry Melcher, son of actress Doris Day and an influential producer at Columbia Records. He produced The Birds, you know, uh, for instance. But Melcher was wary of Manson, declining to invite him to his home at 10050 Cecilo Drive in the Benedict Canyon. Keep that address in mind. When Dennis took uh, Manson, an inspiring musician, to record at the Beach Boys studio, Manson had a disagreement with Wilson's producers and then ended up pulling a knife on them. Somebody clue into this guy, pulling a knife. The other Beach Boys were creeped out by Manson. Singer Mike Love later wrote about how he went over to Dennis's house for dinner, only to find everyone there naked. The after-dinner LSD-fueled orgy was a little too much to take, so he excused himself to take a shower, only to have Manson barging on him and scold him for trying to leave. Imagine taking a shower, and there's a knock on the door, and it's Charles Manson? Good Lord. Oh, man. Please, God. Okay, the Manson-Wilson relationship came to an abrupt end as the summer of 68 came to a close. By the end of the summer, after having blown through an estimated $100,000 in 1968 dollars, which I translated I, to 800000 U.S. in today's dollars to pay for the family's food, medical bills, and damages to his property, Wilson decided enough was enough. Avoiding confrontation, I don't blame him for that one. He moved out of this rented home and let the lease expire. So the landlord had to fam- uh, formally uh, evict the, Man- the Manson family. Wilson got back at Manson by taking one of his songs, Cease to Exist, and recrafting it as Never Learn Not to Love. And it was on the Beach Boys album 2020. And, you know, it's actually not a bad song. So uh, the friendship deteriorated, obviously, with the men, although they still talked a few times. Um, by the summer of 69, after his long-awaited audition for Melcher and it failed to produce the record deal, Manson decided it was time to ignite Helter Skelter. The race wars he warned would wipe out civilization. On August 8th, Manson ordered his followers to kill everyone at 10050 uh, Silo Drive. Melcher had moved out months earlier with his girlfriend, uh, Oh, what was her name? Her father was the ventriloquist. Will come to me. Oh, Bergen. Yeah. Candace Bergen. Candace Bergen. Thank you. Um, oh, Murphy Brown. Yeah, Murphy Brown. <laughs> right. And uh, they apparently didn't even know Sharon Tate was there. But Sharon Tate, wife of Roman Polanski, and a few friends were at the house, and they became the unfortunate victims. The next night, the family struck again with the murder of Leno, Leno rather, and Rosemary Labianca. Strange story and stranger because it involves the Beach Boys. It doesn't earn the doors are Alice Cooper. You could probably put some shading on it, but the Beach Boys, the Manson murders are often regarded as a kind of bookend to the All You Need Is Love, Flower Power, nineteen sixties, with the Rolling Stones at Altamont happening just a few months later. Um, I guess that was December sixty nine. That finally drove the nail into the hippie coffin forever but i don't think of it that way a lot of good vibes came into the 70s however the manson beach boy story is one of those weird tales that only makes sense if you frame it within the tenor of the times and then it comes together right now and this has been dr <laughs> clark with clark comments well, that's fantastic bizarre isn't it it is the manson family and dennis and they put get folks get 2020 look at the credits when you see that song Oh, whatever, never learn how not to love with a double negative on it. That's Charles Manson. I can't believe this man wrote songs and he was so crazy. I, I know. Still get it. Guns N' Roses recorded one. Was, like, he wasn't that bad. You can get a Charles yeah. Manson album now. And he's okay. Does he sing or just... He sings. He's, he's not a bad singer. It is... It's disturbing. <laughs> it really is. Well, and I guess, yeah, because we we're, so, we're so perceived to I see know. that one story, right, right where that... I guess that movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah, there you go. But you said the Lu- Rick Dal- Rick Dalton or Luke Dalton. That's not a real character. Rick Dalton was based on... Oh, let me get this straight. So who's playing the... Uh, DiCaprio's playing uh, the Rick Dalton. The Rick... I don't know. I know... Yeah, it is. I think he's that, a composite of many people. That's right? supposed to be... Um, one of them was a stuntman. Yeah, Brad Pitt played the stuntman. Okay, man. the stuntman was based on a real guy. I forget his name, but he directed Cannibal Run. 
Oh, that was such a good movie with Dom DeLuise. Yeah, and, and he directed right. that. I think Hal Needham is his name. <clears throat> and they and they asked why they wanted uh, Burt Reynolds to uh, to to play in that movie instead of uh, what was his name Dern Bruce Dern, but Burt Reynolds was ill or died, and that was that. But uh, yeah, that was based loosely on. Yeah. You know. Wow, because it was so, the whole the whole thing of that. Of course, there's a happy ending. Imagine that. On Yo, the, there's a happy ending in that one, but in real yeah. life, there is no happy ending. No happy ending. It was yeah. awful. And, well, Tarantino but, is now known for happy endings in things that just don't work, yeah, like, like the this. massacre of the high Nazi command. And oh, what's the Glorious other one? The Django and Ch- oh, yeah, Ch- yeah, yeah, shooting all the slave owner didn't really work out that way. Life. Knew. No. So why are we talking about New Wave? Yeah. Why? Why? <laughs> because basically, what happened. Like a lot of these styles from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, it became cool again. Uh, so there was, in the early O's, uh, bands like Franz Ferdinand brought what was known as the new, uh, the new new wave. And How much newer can you get? Exactly. <laughs> it sounds like something from Spinal Tap. It's kind of like that, actually. It's like <laughs> the new originals. It, yeah. It's basically the in the early O's, mid, mid uh, 2000. Uh, a lot of raves were uh, were happening, and indie rock and electro house actually basically were going through the vaults of all these amazing old bands. And at that point, we had a lot of bands like B-52s, the Go-Go's, the Liz Costello, which uh, even Flock of Seagulls and Duran Duran had yeah, like a sure. second... Duran Duran used to play like audiences in nightclubs, and then suddenly they're doing stadiums again. Gogos are uh, on the list to be inducted. Oh come on! And we, you, you yeah. mentioned another podcast yeah, of it, Brian Adams is in. Like okay, <laughs> so the guess who? And the Go Go's. Jonas Priest is still fighting to get a, a vote. But the Go Go's <laughs> got in because they're a good band. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> okay, you didn't. <laughs> So basically, New Wave is still with us in a certain way. So we have a little test for you if you want to know if something is New Wave. Yeah. So when you're listening to something, these are five characteristics that will allow you to guess pretty much at a a party where there's trivia if it's New Wave. So the first one is reduced blues influence. So if you're listening to 70s stuff, Mm -hmm. blues was really big. True. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if you're listening to something and all of a sudden the bluesy side of it is coming out, is dripping out and electronics coming in, then there's a good chance it's new wave. The other thing is punk energy. So in the early days of new wave, it's basically, it is like light punk. So yeah, it is. Uh, the Talking Heads are not the Sex Pistols, but they have more or less. Hype, common... They're all they're hyped up. They're or, hyped up. Yeah, I could listen to Talking Heads, Sex Pistols. Nah, that's all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I want them driving anyway. Uh, the other thing is rhythmic experimentation. So new wave artists tend to go in really weird rhythm sections. Yeah, they double music. time stuff. Yeah. Uh, Devo in particular, Talking Heads again. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the Police, Adam and the Ants, which is not a band you want to listen to while you're on a picnic. Uh, <laughs> Bow Wow Wow and Duran Duran all have really strange rhythm sections. Yeah, it's, true. it's absolutely true. I like Duran Duran, though. And one of the reasons is band. these guys were addicted to music that was coming out of Jamaica, C- Cuba, and West African countries at that point. So that sure. would explain why their concept of musical time is slightly different Uh from most of their contemporaries I'd... I gotta say it was refreshing too I mean after the 70s and Me, stuff yeah. you know the 4-4 four, four beat stuff it was okay to do double time hyped up stuff plus you could dance to uh, you could dance to New Wave exactly you can't really dance to Steve Miller so, <laughs> so <laughs> not really Sonny Charles did yeah he tried <laughs> ooh jetliner <laughs> Don't carry me too far away. So speaking of, of dancing on the rhythm, one of the other things that you'll always know uh, is New Wave, if you're listening to it, is the increasing use of keyboard, especially electronic keyboards. That's true. Uh, so if you're listening to The Cars, The Police, The Page Mode, Gary Newman, and The Human League, there is a good chance you're going to listen to a lot of electronic well, keyboards. Well, that's all what the hell Gary Newman was, wasn't it? In exactly. Cars. Ding, ding. Ding, 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 ding. That one hit, but it was a great mood song. 
And if you're able, not so much to whistle to it, but you'll tap your feet to it, it's the mainstream appeal. So what what was really new wave in the late 70s, early 80s, it's that everybody and their grandma could get in, really in, get into it, especially with the MTV music videos, the Buggles, uh, all these groups. Yeah. There wasn't really anything that you could object to when you saw their videos. No, they weren't singing about four dead in Ohio. <laughs> like they weren't, you know what I mean? They exactly. weren't. It was just, you know, this lighthearted stuff. Hey, that's bizarre. I'm hearing Kennedy like. That's his stomach he, he, grumbling. Oh, okay. He hasn't had oh. food in a while. Well, it's, it's time though. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. time. It's time for Kennedy's Corner again. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Welcome to Kennedy's Corner. Following the advice of a behavioral psychologist, Ferris Kennedy has created a form to express his nightmares, his terror, and his love of rock music. Dr. Clark and medicated Wheeler help with his therapy by answering questions, or just acting like they're interested. Wow. This time I did it a little bit differently, uh, talking with you guys in marketing. Uh, they were saying, well, how do you feel if I give you a topic today of who, what, or which does Kennedy prefer? <laughs> so this time around... Who, what, or which. Okay, okay. So who, which one of you, which one of you fine gentlemen wants to be tortured he does. first? Okay. He does. <laughs> Stephen Wheeler. <laughs> yes, sir. <clears throat> who, do, who, what, which, or whatever does Kennedy <laughs> prefer? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to list two names. You tell me, you know, I'll just keep going. Sure. Kim Thale of Soundgarden or Mike McCready of Pearl Jam? Mike McCready. Oh, okay, you know me well. Uh, Brian Johnson or Bon Scott? <laughs> oh, this Ooh. is a, watch it, watch it. You will lose your friendship if you blow this uh, one. Bon Scott? Mm. No. no, friendship's no. over. Sorry, bro. <laughs> After thirty some odd years, it was nice knowing you. It um, happens. Chad Smith or Tommy Lee? Tommy Lee. Mm -hmm. uh, do I prefer the Foo Fighters or Nirvana? Oh, man, that's a hard one. No, you, you know, listen to you Foo Fighters more correct. than you do Nirvana. True. So I'll, I'll go with Foo Fighters. Yeah, I'll give you that one. Because <laughs> there's a girl element in both. Well, exactly, yeah. Uh, do I prefer Steve Harris of Iron Maiden or Duff McKagan of GNR? Duff McKagan? Yes. Do I prefer Andy Kim or Elton John? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I Elton John I, I, as a performer. But I know. Which one do I prefer? Uh, um, rock me gently, rock me slowly. I'll go with Elton John. Yeah, you're oh. smart. <laughs> but because, but I know you'll you'll go and I have a beer Andy with Kim. Andy yeah, Kim. I love Andy Kim, but I have I just there's more Elton John than I know, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> do I prefer uh, Jimmy Page or Keith Richards? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, uh, I think you're more in a Jimmy Page phase, aren't you? Okay. Yes, that's correct. Um, do I like the album 10 or the album Versus of Pearl Jam? 10? Mm, mm. No. Versus. Yeah, I had this conversation with my buddy Kyle. He agrees. The date's off. Yeah. yeah. Do you believe I like Slippery When Wet or New Jersey by Bon Jovi? Uh, slippery When Wet. Mm, you're saving yourself there. <laughs> do I prefer Abbey Road or Rubber Soul? Abbey Road. Yes. Uh, which one I like better? Do I like Crime of the Century or Breakfast in America? Breakfast in America. Yeah, you remember that, eh? <laughs> uh, do I like Led Zeppelin 2 or Led Zeppelin 4? Ah, uh, you told me the other day. I, um, I want to say 4. Yeah, no, 2. 2, no. <laughs> so you were listening to One, one right? of them he considers shite and the other one he likes, and I can never remember which one. Oh, which. I love both of them. I think this 2 is just more heavy. I love it. I know 3 you consider shite. Oh, I don't like 3 at all. Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, he's shite. Uh, do I prefer Theater of Pain or Dr. Feelgood? Dr. Feelgood. Yes. And the in last every, thing is, in every sense of that word. <laughs> and do I, do I prefer the album Beggar's Banquet or Let It Bleed? <laughs> oh, I hope you... I got an idea what you should prefer. Uh, let It Bleed? Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> That's the one, yes. Dr. Clark. Yes. All right, here we go. How may I help you? Do I like Kenny Aronoff or David Grohl? Oh, <laughs> a nice try. Okay, I'm going to go with David Grohl. It's kind of a trick question. No, it's yeah, a little tricky. A little tricky, yes. A little tricky. Uh, here's one that you might get right. Do I like Eddie Van Halen or do I like Slashmore? You know, I think you like Slashmore. Yeah, you're good. Okay. 
Uh, do I prefer Aerosmith or Guns N' Roses? Oh, I'm going to say Guns N' Roses. Oh, he's three for three wheels. What's going on here? Going on. Uh, do I like Steve Tyler? Mm-hmm. Or uh, Sorry, wrong one. Where am I reading here? Um, yeah, do I like Steve Tyler or Steve Perry? You like them both. Do I, who do you like more? I'm going to say yeah, pound for pound Steve, Steve Tyler. Yeah. Yeah, pound for pound. You like Perry too. I do. You like, he has a good voice. But the thing is, Tyler is nice. he's Italian, Perry is Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do I like Kurt Cobain or do I like Brian Adams more? Oh, oh. You, I would say Brian Adams. Mm-hmm. Pound for pound. Do I, and this one here is going to have a hard time, do I like Vince Neil more or do I like David Lee Roth? Oh, wow. This could be a trick question. I'm going to go out, folks, this is, I could blow this one. I'm going to go with Roth. Yeah, I do. Okay. Now here's now is a tough one. Do I like Joe Perry or do I like Steve Stevens? Because he knows no. I speak highly of these guys. You prefer Joe Pesci. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm going to go with... Uh, this is really a trick one. Um, I'm going to go with Steve Stevens. Uh, I like Joe. Really? Yeah, I do. Just because... For albums, Ian, do I prefer Appetite for Destruction or Lies by GNR? Which one of those two do I like better? Mm, appetite. No, I like Lies. You fool. <laughs> Why you the fool? Oh, well, I don't know. That's a, okay. Uh, do I prefer Reckless or Waking Up the Neighbors by Brian Adams? Okay, well, these are two. That's a tough one. I'm, gonna, I'm going with Reckless. Yeah, okay, it's okay. safe. I could have gone either way because yeah, they're yeah, both that's solid. pretty close. Uh, now, here's a trick one. Do I like the first album of Van Halen, which is Van Halen, I guess, Van Halen self titled, yeah. or 1984? I'm going to go with 1984. Yeah, no. No? I like the first Come one. Come on, class it up. Uh, here's one that's going to be hard. Do I like the Foo Fighters self-titled album, or do I like Echo, Silence, Patience, and Grace? You like Echo, because you mentioned it before. Yes, I yeah. do. Uh, do I prefer Back in Black, or do I prefer Highway to Hell? Uh, back in Black. Oh, this guy is getting Yeah, I good. listen, I listen. Uh, Houses of the Holy, or Physical Graffiti, which one I like mm. better? How's it about physical graffiti? I think you like physical graffiti. Can't stand physical graffiti. You fool. I don't like that album too much. Aww. I just like Cashmere, is about it. Uh, I like How's the Holy Better. Okay. And uh, final one for you, sir. Do I like the Joshua Tree or Octung Baby? I know you like the Joshua Tree. Yeah, Octung. You, you mentioned it. You see, you're lying now. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard because those two are good albums, but I could go either way, but today I'm feeling more Octung. <laughs> Thank and you. That, Very that, interesting. That's pretty good. You guys yeah. know me quite well. Wheels, I know I like to poke at you there. <laughs> but no, uh, yeah. Well, well, the thing is, I've known you for so long that I've actually seen you evolve in your musical tastes. It's and just, physically, too, and mentally. Nah, a bit. A bit. <laughs> a bit. I, I had to make it challenging because everyone, you know, like when I said Mike McCready or, or Kim Thiel, either one I like, but... It's hard to... Yeah. It's who you talk more about. That's what I went by. Yeah. Well, and the, the other thing is, it's your musical knowledge and taste that's so freakishly vast <laughs> that it's so hard to pinpoint where you're actually... Like, where, where you would prefer something. Oh, we know what you hate. <laughs> yeah. I could have that. What do I hate more? <laughs> you know, that would have been... That would have been... No, fr- again, that'd the be same tough, thing, though. You're such a passionate guy, like... Yeah. Who, who would you shoot or who would you run over with your car? And we'd be, we would go with, okay, he likes this car. I do, yeah, I love that car. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like to shoot things, so whatever. You know, exactly. It's all good. Uh, yeah, I know it's tough because we don't know yeah. where to go. But Exactly. You know, no, it's good. It's entertaining. Thank you. Well, let's try to change it up a bit. Very good. <laughs> so uh, I want to end our little trip through New Wave all right. uh, with a little... Because we talked about the fact that it died of implosion to a certain degree. True. But y- there are certain moments, like uh, when you talked about Disco Dr. Clark. Yeah. Uh, there, that stadium b- burning yeah. was pretty much like the, the the moment where Disco started falling off the cliff. Yeah, it really did. I think the Disco Duck finally killed it. Yeah. Oh, that was uh, Rick Dees. Yeah, that was sad. Yeah. Uh, and there is more or less something that is similar with New Wave. Uh, but New Wave, 
uh, was on the coma, not, don't resuscitate uh, yeah. bed yeah, yeah. for a longer time. Uh, so uh, the Memorial Weekend of 1983, there was something called the US Festival. So oh yeah, sure. Uh, so the the US Festival is known by very few people outside of mm. metal fans, new wave fans, Simpson fans. And Apple uh, computer fans. I know, I know. Uh, it was... Because what you have to know is 19, uh, 1983, the US Festival was organized by Steve Wozniak, yeah. which was the other creator of Apple computers. Yeah, um, he, has, he, has um, a, he has a few dollars, yeah. We'll, yeah. You think he's okay? I think he'll, he can afford well, bread. Well, he's not as rich as we think. Oh, uh, uh, he can afford bread and he cheese. He can afford, but yeah, but it, he's not like Bill Gates money. He, uh, mm, but, maybe no. But he's actually but very uh, he's an extraordinarily creative guy and he had a very vast knowledge and uh, spectrum of taste and he, he wanted to create basically the Woodstock of the 80s it didn't really work out that way well not with new wave bands you crazy sorry uh, <laughs> no but uh, but the thing is it, it was actually very smart of him what he wanted to do was basically uh, do a three-day festival in which uh, every day would have a different musical genre. The problem was he did radio friendly new wave more or less on the first day. Uh, this was followed the next day by the metal revolution. Yeah. So you have uh, bands like Iron Maiden, Def Leppard, Dio, and Ozzy Osbourne coming in. That's not new wave. That, no, no, no. For metal day. Oh, a uh, metal day. I would have gone there. Uh, and. They just, the, the vibe of the festival just completely changed at that point. And it just destroyed New Wave. Uh, it seems weaker compared to Metal Day and Rock Day. Because well, Rock Day had U2 Clash, Van Halen, and David Bowie. Yeah, the New Wave was a hey, I was <laughs> Well, I always thought of his bar band stuff. You don't want to hear the talking heads at Wembley. Like it does what? Sex no. Pistols at Wembley. Yes, yeah, these are bar band stuff. So against Ozzy Osbourne, yeah, he's a, he's a stadium guy, stadium rock. Your buddy Brian Adams, stadium rock. Yeah, it's hard to get. Um, I don't know. Even Blondie would have trouble at Wembley. It doesn't work out that way. So Wembley is is more for stadium bands. If yeah, you know. well, yeah, that's right. <laughs> do you I think thought... Michael Bublé could do Wembley? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he's he's a mystery to me, at any size. I don't really get my. That's another show, I He guess. sells out. <laughs> I know. Who knows? My mother loves this guy. She thinks he's great. It's, just, it's inexplicable to me. Why wouldn't I just get the Sinatra album? He's covered. Like, would, anyway. Sinatra have, would, would Sinatra in his prime, could he have done Wembley? He did something bigger. Frank Sinatra did a stadium in Brazil. At that time, it was the biggest crowd assembled for uh, you know, a singer in history. Bigger than Woodstock. Check it out. And that's Frank Sinatra. Sinatra was, was and that's and that's not a you know an English speaking country. Yeah, so yeah, he was God for a while there. But no, I just think anyway, we'll do a show. Something no, we can't do. It's not rock. But <laughs> if you why don't you write in, it, folks, and try to explain to me the the magic of Michael Bublé. I just can't get it. Serious rock talk at gmail <laughs> dot com. Please. Let us know. So, so basically what happened was the vibe on Metal Day and Rock Day yeah. just destroyed New Wave and it created new fans actually of metal uh, and of rock. Scorpions actually had oh a, my God. a hit there. <laughs> uh, U2, which wasn't really big at that point. Van Halen, they were big, but they weren't as big. Yeah, they U2 weren't, was classified no. as New Wave when they started. They exactly. were, yeah. yeah. Uh, but at that weekend really uh, started something... Where all these big band, these big rock bands, this hard sound would become much bigger. Actually, somebody said uh, it, it's just bizarre to have the uh, tea tea drinking crowd right next to the people who put iced tea in their Jack Daniel bottles. Yeah, that's well put, uh, eh? That's so, really well. That's what happened. What a dopey idea. Uh, and but the, the, and the other reason why basically the Oz, the S festival was. Uh, <laughs> Some slightly forgotten was lost 20 million 80, 83 yeah. money out of that. Uh, that's a lot of Apple II computers, that's a lot of Apple II computers. Uh, but the S Festival is now considered the most guitar powered huh. festival of the last 40 years. Uh, and so it just goes to show sometimes 
a, a musical, a musical style, a, a way of being, a, yeah. a fashion. All it takes is a little moment in history, and everything changes. Yeah, really good point. That's really interesting, man. Good job. Uh, I found here something, Wheels, because you asked me to kind of do some research for you, and I did. I came up with, this is a website you're going to like, digitaldreamdoor.com. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. So they came up with a criteria of uh, these songs were chosen for the musical quality, originality, and popularity in the new wave era of approximately 78 to 87. And their background is, new wave evolved from punk in the late 70s being less antisocial and more radio and MTV friendly hitting its high in 83 and faded around 87. It can be best described as mixing the energy of punk with a bit of glam, pop, art rock, and dance and relied heavily on synthesizers. And it says, note, these songs are not necessarily the artist's all-time greatest, but they're best of the new wave sound. So I'll just fire off a few here. Uh, Eurythmics, Sweet Dreams. Yeah. Simple Minds, Don't You Forget About Me. Yeah. Uh, Tears of Fears, Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Sure. Uh, Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Relax, don't, don't do it. it. Frankie uh, says relax. One Way or Another, Blondie, Burning Down the House. Oh, I don't remember the burning down. Yeah, talking heads, great. Yeah. Uh, Tainted love, down under. I ran so far away. Uh, Human league, don't you want me? Your your buddy Rick Ocasek, you might think. Uh, I don't know my best friend's girlfriend. Well, that's a song you might think. You Last might think song? I'm crazy. You, no, no, yeah. Mercifully, I don't know it. Right. <laughs> uh, Modern English, never heard of them, but hey, they had a song called "I Melt with You." Aha, uh-huh, take on me. Uh, obviously, Duran Duran, hungry like the wolf. Uh, whip it. Would be good. Blue Monday, New Order. And don't stand so close to me. The police. That was actually a COVID nineteen song. Uh, <laughs> True, it was. Yeah. Shout again. Shout. Uh, the Pretenders with Brass and Pocket. Yeah. Oh, the Vapors. I love the song. Turning Japanese. Oh wow! I really yeah. think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hold me now. Thompson Twins. Really. Oh, yeah. Well, that was a big hit. Mid-80s, okay. yeah. Uh, B-52's Rock Lobster, Heart of Glass. Uh, These are all interesting because they were all hits. Yeah, they're all hits and, they, you know, whatever. You know, and they're so fun. Th- that's fun. They're all lighter songs, too. I mean, they're not social commentary. It's just usually boy-girl songs. And then they had here a list of albums. You know, they had Wham! Make It Big Again. I'm, yeah. I'm not convinced that they're New Wave. Either am I. Uh, Culture Club, Color by Numbers. Yes, Boy George was New Wave. Yeah, he was. Um, In Excess, Listen Like Thieves. I guess so. I, they're all almost more rocky. I never thought of them as new wave. I, I thought they when they started off, I guess they were, but then they kind of became modern. Yeah. Uh, your good old buddy here, Elvis Costello, and the attractions with the album Imperial Bedroom. Yeah, they were. I I think he's new wave. Yeah. Uh, Echo and the Bunnymen, Ocean Rain. Sure. And what good else band, you got here? Actually. Duran Duran, self-titled Duran Duran. Yep. Uh, the Pesh Mud, music for the masses. Good musicians. Uh, Tears Which, for Fears. The hurting, yeah. They, you know, Didn't we're they talking... just release a new album. Possibly. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say they've they're, they've come back. Are they brothers? No. Okay. They're old like school buddies, yeah. but um, no, okay. very different guys. Uh, the fix, yeah. Mm. With their album, reach the beach. Uh, television, Marky Moon. Squeeze. Well, that's a classic, is it? Every, yeah, okay. I, to Marky Moon is a classic. Squeeze. Ikrazi, East Side Story. Uh, Eurythmic Sweet Dreams. That's a classic. Uh, Devo, Freedom of Choice. Yep. Uh, David Bowie, I don't know if he's really... Well, he could have crossed... He's crossed, not. He crossed uh, pretty much He was genre. there, but I would say he's a rocker. Yeah. Uh, ABC, okay. Yeah, they had one well, one great album. Uh, the Lexicon of Love. Yeah, it was yeah. a good album. Boingo, Boingo? Yeah, they're, they're, around, they're around forever, I thought. Uh, your buddy Roxy Music here. New Wave... I guess so. I put them with New Romantics. Well, it's the song, uh, the album Avalon. Avalon. Uh, Michael Jackson's father, Joe Jackson, did the looks. (laughs) (laughs) It is. It's not him, is it? But it's not like an uncommon Is it him? Yeah, it's Joe. That Joe Jackson? No, it's not. It's this little skinny British guy. Okay. And that's a good album. Uh, Ecstasy, Drums and Wires. Mm -hmm. Uh, What else you got? New Order, Power, Corruption, and Lies. That sounds like awful awesome. Grunge. Logos, Beauty and the Beat, and they're yeah, being inducted. Yeah, 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 that yeah, one. Yeah. Uh, the Police, Synchronicity. Huge album. B-52, self-titled B-52s. Yeah. By the way, trivia. Uh, 
Fred Schneider. Right, B-52s. Yeah, lead singer is the first cousin of D. Schneider from uh, Twisted Sister. I thought you were going to say Rob Schneider. <laughs> no, it's not spelled the same. And they all make Schneider meat, uh, too. I'm going to mention your buddy again, Elvis Costello, with My Aim is True. There, That's two albums we just mentioned. Yeah, all right. <laughs> oh, here's another one, Elvis Costello, this year's model. God, I can't hold my stuff, yeah. <laughs> and that's Ian's it. like, you named me three albums we just did. <laughs> Human League? No, you didn't. Dare. <laughs> Don't you want me, baby? Uh, then we got the police again with Zenayata Mondada. Yeah, because they did stuff like that. Uh, the cars, the cars. Oh. <laughs> Duran Duran Rio, Blondie Parallel Lines. Great album, actually. And then the final two, The Pretenders with Pretenders, and Talking Heads with Remain in Light. Yeah, that's right. That, I, that's I wouldn't one. have listed. Oh, number one, really? Yeah. I wouldn't have chosen that as the number no, one talking heads, but I okay. Chosen, I, I would have put your rhythm mix a lot higher than what Yeah. I would have put like your rhythm mix, maybe Duran Duran, maybe throwing an excess. There's always been a problem with Duran Duran and the critics because they're a little bit of a boy band. They played that up. But hey, the Beatles were a boy band, so what? They were a boy band until Paul McCartney's at work. Yeah, I guess so. But that the times changed. They got rid of their character and suits. Was it though Brian Epstein's death that really changed it? Yes, because they weren't managed by an adult anymore. There was a bunch of... <laughs> Sign of the times too, though, yeah. right? Yeah, because he was very mature, mm, kind of. Good. He was, yeah, anyway, I'll talk about him someday. He made a lot of mistakes. He cost them billions. But anyway, that's Brian Epstein. You got a review hanging around there? Oh, hello. The music at night. It sounds bright. On Wheeler's turntable, he shines a light, he keeps his vinyl in sight, and gives you his magnificent review. Now here's a clue we have for you, it's time for Wheeler's Vinyl Review. Yes sir, go ahead. <laughs> so basically this is... Our second week with a contest vinyl. SeriousRockTalk at gmail.com. When you hear the show, say, hey, New Wave Show, I want that album. <laughs> what album would that be? Yes, sir. What are you doing now? So, Steve Miller's Greatest Hits. Oh, that is so New Wave. <laughs> <laughs> it's the anti-New Wave so album. Call, <laughs> I want to reach <laughs> out and grab you. you. Can you just, what is it? Dance to Jet Airline? <laughs> Ooh, Jet Liner. <laughs> Don't take me too far away. God. So basically, it's all the best cuts of Steve Miller's album. You know, that from... might not be too bad. That's no, it's actually, a, it's actually a really good album. Yeah, I mean, from... he goes back to the 60s. He's exactly. from San Francisco. That's a Paul Penn. That Although this one is more, mostly oh. stuff from 74 to 78. I was going to uh, say, that's good. better years. <laughs> well, yeah. He, got, he had, what, two great albums. So, out. The Joker, Fly Like... Uh, Fly Like an Eagle, yeah. uh, and Book of Dreams. Yeah, so, I mean, like, he made a career. Exactly. But they were pretty good albums. Everybody had them. Well, that's it. They were unavoidable. I have that great. I have that album. Do so you? It's, 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 it's probably it's the good. best lineup the band ever had, which is Steve Miller on guitar vocals, uh, David Denny on guitars, Gary Malabar, Malabar, or Malabar, yeah, Malabar, Malabar yeah. Sure. Uh, drums, Lonnie T uh, Turner on bass guitar, Byron Alfred on keyboard, and Greg Douglas on slide guitar. Uh, you have amazing songs like Jungle Love, which starts with a keyboard slowing down, and then, er then there's a really catchy verse that leads into a chorus. Uh, Take the Money and Run. These are great songs. I mean, yeah. they are. Uh, although Take the Money and Run was never the big hit it should have been. Uh, it starts with a really good drum fill. Uh, actually, it's a really great drum piece to uh, to my it's ear. It's a good riff too. Exactly. Yeah, I remember that. And the solo is basically a chord progression, which when you think really? about it is a I don't know if it's a mill finger or if it's a show off piece. Yeah, really. Uh, which ends with a chorus. Uh, and of course the the piece everybody knows from this album which is The Joker. Uh, the song is very recognizable and arguably their most famous one. Is that? Uh, oh yeah, right, yeah. That's a really interesting song, eh? Yeah. It, Trivia there is he apparently made up a, a word called pompatus. But then these, there's just like a Carly Simon, you know, you're so vain type thing. Did he actually make it up? Did he rip it off? An old blues singer. And he's never really come clean on that. But at a point he says something about the pompatus of love 
it's not a real word, no, but don't. it works. You listen to it and think, yeah, okay, I'm going to this. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but you look it up. No. And if you're a teenager listening to us, it's a really great, The Joke is a really great uh, song for slow dancing. Uh, has and a also, great bass, bass line, if very you're, relaxed. If you're an aspiring uh, guitar player, it's three chords. Exactly. Yeah, boom, boom, <laughs> boom, 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 boom. There's nothing to it. Uh, there, there's also uh, Fly Like an Eagle, which is do, um, another do, very do, famous do, one. Do, do, do. Yeah, Sealer did a remake on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. It was uh, for point. Space Jam, I think. Yeah. Uh, it's very funky, laid back, cool, and lax. Uh, very good use of keyboard. And it... Well, I mean, it does the same routine a couple of times within the song, so yeah. it, it's not one you want to listen to too often, but uh, every once in a while. So, in the pros, got Steve Miller's genius on the guitar, uh, great way, uh, bass lines. The background of the songs is really good. Uh, the only thing is, if you're a fan of solos, it's not a great album for that. <laughs> uh, but then again, th- there's so many great albums with uh, great solo solos ever out there <laughs> oh so that's your review that's my thank review thank you alright 4 out of 5 well if you guys want it seriousrocktalk at gmail.com just say new wave uh, episode can I have the album please and well if you're there and if you're the first one and you, and you, you get it you get it is no. it courtesy of anybody to sell this one yeah it's courtesy of actually uh, Mr. Brent Knox of Crosstown Traffic was kind enough to provide us with this album here uh, where is Crosstown it is at uh, in Ottawa at, uh, looking at 593 C Bank Street which is actually our office <laughs> hey that's where we are wait a second <laughs> we are too so it's kind of nice to just go downstairs help ourselves and uh, <laughs> I mean, you know he knows that we're giving away stuff right and then he has to give it away because we told people in there yeah so that's it that's it so thank you well I'm signing off or who, are, or who are you? I'm Kennedy. And I'm Dr. Ian Clark. And I'm Wheeler. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night.